They are numerous to be sure. And I think that if we break them down, to me, the most important thing is we do not have an accurate method of diagnosing patients with polycythemia vera. And that's clearly not trivial in the sense that it's the most common myeloproliferative neoplasm and the one that needs treatment on diagnosis most acutely because polycythemia vera patients are at risk of thrombosis. And at this point in time, um, we lack the diagnostic tools to truly diagnose the disease. Uh, and the um, diagnostic criteria of the World Health Organization are totally inadequate. There's a little trick with polycythemia vera. Erythrocytosis sets it apart from essential thrombocytosis and primary myelofibrosis. But erythrocytosis in polycythemia vera is often masked by expansion of the plasma biome. <clears throat> this is the opposite of what happens if you have hypoxic erythrocytosis where the body constricts the plasma biome to make room for more red cells. <clears throat> so in a segment of polycythemia vera patients, most commonly women, they will have what we call mass polycythemia vera. Their hematocrits may be normal. And if they get the Budd-Chiari syndrome, they may have hematocrits that are below normal, but they will have a greatly expanded blood volume. So trying to diagnose these patients who are the most need of treatment is a problem. The um, World Health or excuse me, World Health Organization diagnostic criteria are totally inadequate. Um, we know the genetic drivers of the myeloproliferative disorders. And um, one of the nice things about knowing that is we also know um, how many can measure how many stem cells have the mutation. So we can do essentially a tumor burden analysis on all NPN patients. And um, in polycythemia vera patients, there are some who have a stem cell burden, mutated JAK2, that's less than 50%. And some have a much higher burden. They have clonal dominance. It's above 50%. You can segregate patients into sort of high risk, low risk potential by their JAK2 V617F quantitative allele burden. The World Health Organization diagnostic criteria say nothing about this. The criteria say look for a patient with either a high hematocrit or high hemoglobin level. <clears throat> well, this is inadequate. Back in 1908, <clears throat> Uh, polycythemia vera uh, physicians knew that the hemoglobin is not an adequate measure of erythrocytosis. The red cell is, red cell count is, but the World Health Organization diagnostic criteria say nothing about the red cell count. And you can have an interesting situation where you have a high red cell count, a normal hemoglobin and hematocrit, but you have a low MCV. There, the red cell is smarter than humans are. It knows <clears throat> that if it can't get enough iron, it makes a smaller red cell, but it makes more of them. So you have a clue. Microcytic erythrocytosis is a clue to polycythemia vera. But the World Health Organization criteria say nothing about this. They also omit as diagnostic criteria leukocytosis and thrombocytosis and splenomegaly, which many patients have on presentation. So if it's viewed as erythrocytosis alone, um, then you're gonna think about it differently than if you saw that there was leukocytosis and erythrocytosis uh, and thrombocytosis. And yet, um, there's um, most patients, most physicians think polycythemia vera patients should be treated with hydroxyurea. Why would you do that if you're not considering them to have thrombocytosis and leukocytosis as part of their disease. That's irrational. It's also irrational to try and lower those blood counts because they don't contribute to thrombosis. So uh, there are real problems here that um, have not been addressed. And we know that just treating, lowering the, um, lowering the uh, red cell count will prevent thromboses. 
But um, we've sort of tripped up and think that everyone should be treated to the uh, phlebotomized to the same hematocrit. Women have smaller blood volumes than men. So if you leave them at a hematocrit of 45%, they will have more red cells than a normal woman should have. Um, and this is where we get in trouble with thromboses. So um, how do you explain to physicians who obviously learned this in medical school and then forgot it, that a woman's hematocrit is lower than a man's because women make less androgen than men. Uh, and these are things that are totally ignored these days. And um, that's very unfortunate in my opinion.